Welcome everyone to our talk today called Responsible Artificial Intelligence Practices or Comparative Analysis between Europe and Africa. Um, we are from the organization called Artificial Intelligence for Development Agency and we will tell you more about um, this organization in a minute. But first of all, we wanted to say how excited we are to be with you here today. And we also wanted to thank Dr. Nick Bradshaw and also his team for inviting us and giving us the opportunity to participate and contribute to the AI Expo for Africa 2021 um, this year. Some um, information about myself. My name is Elena Ardelian. I am the CEO and founder of Artificial Intelligence for Development Agency. Um, we are based in Austria, or I am based in Austria, in Vienna. I'm an economist by, by profession, but was also trained in machine learning. And a few years ago, I have had this crazy idea, basically, to demystify artificial intelligence and bring it closer to, to people. And um, I am joined today by um, Mfon. Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for having me here. I feel extremely honored to be a part of this year's AI Expo Africa. My name is Mfon. I am joining in from Nigeria. I work with Ida as a social media coordinator, and together we'll be presenting our findings on responsible AI. AI. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Mfon. So just uh, to share with you a few key points that we will talk about in this uh, presentation, we only have 20 to 30 minutes maximum. Uh, so uh, we're on a very tight schedule. Um, but we wanted to touch first with you upon um, the, our organization and what we are currently doing. Um, and after that, we would like to slowly but surely move into the topic of the day, so responsible artificial intelligence. We will first share some insights from our own research that we have carried out in-house. And then uh, we will talk about how Europe and some other countries around the world are dealing with responsible AI, with ethics of AI. And then Enfon will share with us um, how um, Africa or some countries in Africa are approaching ethics of AI and responsible AI already. And we hope this discussion to be as stimulating and as uh, engaging as possible. So please use the chat function anytime, share your questions with us and we'll be more than happy to, to address this, uh, these questions there. So in a nutshell, um, AIDA was founded in 2019 in Austria, in Vienna. Um, why? Because, as I said before, we wanted to bring AI knowledge and AI understanding closer to people. And basically, our re mission is really to create an inclusive and diverse AI society that empowers, in particular, youth and women, as these are our main target groups. Our vision is to have a world with AI. We understand AI is here to stay. Uh, however, we want to question what kind of AI we should have, and in particular empower our target groups, youth and women, to be participants in the AI evolution and revolution. Our purpose is to work together collaboratively with our partners, collaborators, individuals, whoever wants to join us in this, on this mission to create a better society, a more informed society, and the society empowered for the era of artificial intelligence. We understand that this is a global challenge uh, and it's something that we cannot tackle uh, on our own, but together I think we can, we can move forward this agenda and then create a sustainable um, environment and um, knowledge sharing educational environment for everybody. Um, we've also thought it was very important for our organization and also any kind of engagement we have with our partners and collaborators to define for ourselves some guiding principles. So as a team, we have um, defined four guiding principles such as justice, diversity and inclusion, integrity and empowerment. Each of these principles um, can be you know, further addressed. You can access them on our website so that you can see a little bit better how, you, how we incorporate those principles in our daily work and but also in our collaborations with partners and um, and, um, and and other collaborators that, that help us uh, deliver our our daily work um, our 
activities are, are built on several pillars. So one of the pillars is in-house research, and I will talk a little bit more about that in a, in a minute. Uh, we also organize events and conferences or webinars on um, topics related to artificial intelligence. We also um, have put together an AI awareness program and the AI literacy program, so educational program that doesn't go so much into the technical side of AI, but more on the economic impact and social impact of AI on our societies. And the organization is a member of the European AI Alliance and of course is participating in some other high level, um, key high level working groups on artificial intelligence or on responsible AI. Among our partners, as you can see, we have a variety from, um, I would say, NGOs to um, academia or research institutes and some public organizations that are supporting our work. As I said before, the organization started in, in 2019 uh, with the idea to for each of us to be able to fully benefit of the many AI opportunities um, it is providing us with, and also basically to tackle this information and lack of understanding. And as you can see, we have expanded in different countries with different programs, programs that are advancing and developing at different levels, depending on what we find on the ground and the community. And um, we basically count uh, many countries from Peru to Nigeria, like Enfone is basically today on the call with us, to also uh, the Middle East, so like Kuwait or the UAE and other European countries. And apart from the research that we are doing, uh, we thought we would just like to give you a little bit of a, of a taste on the different events we are participating, taking part in, uh, but also contributing to conferences and you know, research papers, but also the training program that you can see more on the, I would say on the, on the left-hand side um, that we are running Kuwait, um, a training program on artificial intelligence for families, but also a competition um, for which one of the families has won the grand prize for the junior category. And without further ado, I will give the floor to Mfon to take us through um, some of the, the findings uh, and key things for today. Thank you very much, Elena. So um, why do we care about responsible AI? It is important because AI plays a role in the lives of billions of people, sometimes unnoticed and oftentimes with consequences. Artificial intelligence is projected to generate about $4 trillion globally by 2022. And much of this activity is happening in high income countries. So which means that there is a divide in terms of advancement of AI when you look at the African context and Asian, some Asian countries. This is why we care. Next slide, please. When we talk about responsible AI, some key questions uh, come up. AI can potentially do a lot, should it? The answer is yes, it should. However, artificial intelligence should always uphold human rights principles, um, the rule of law, and um, human, um, uh, democ democracy. So this is why it is important. AI has the ability to impact our lives positively in various sectors from health, agriculture, and possibly also um, most of the sustainable development goals. There is, um, there is an intersection where AI can function in these areas. However, um, the values and the approach is what matters. How is it being approached? Are we using a one size fit all approach? Because when you look at um, technological development, you take into context cultural differences. Are these cultural differences being considered in developing responsible AI? That is the question. And we will try to expand more on this as we continue our presentation. Next slide, please. Um, you can see in the graph that the interest in artificial intelligence has grown significantly from 2016 to 2021, um, which is a good thing. Much of it has been uh, in, uh, I think you can see Philippines is the highest and followed by 
India, Canada, United States, and United Kingdom. So there's a bit of a gap here when you look at the African context, responsible AI, what are we doing in Africa? How are we tackling it? What, what measures have been put in, in place to ensure that organizations take into context the cultural diversity in Africa to develop um, software solutions? Next slide, please. So now we go to the definition of artificial intelligence. What is AI? We, we've talked so much about AI in the last few minutes, and now we need to formulate or define it. Artificial intelligence is a machine-enabled solution that acts on higher levels of human intelligence, emulating human capabilities, like um, senses, functions, and ability to comprehend. So AI is not just an algorithm, but also it is dependent on the result. And the result is also more important. It's not just a machine learning solution. How I am rather, it is a machine that impacts our lives daily, which is why um, responsible AI is what we, is why we are with our focus for this presentation. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Now we talk about AI. What do we mean when we talk about AI? We are talking about the interaction, adaptability, autonomy. You can see that artificial intelligence solutions are usually driven in such a way that they interfere with our lives daily. And this is why we, we are interested in knowing how this software, how these machines are formulated to interact with us. In the case of autonomy, you have self-driving cars. Who is, who is held responsible when there is an error? And then in interaction, you have um, virtual assistants, you have chatbots, you have Siri, and they are interacting with you and influencing our lives daily and influencing our decisions. This is why we are interested in how they are being developed and the values taken into consideration in developing these softwares. Next slide, please. <laughs> Taking responsibility in AI process starts from the design and goes, uh, goes into the implementation um, stage, which is um, the final stage of um, this, the process. So how are solutions being designed for who and what is being taken into consideration? You have issues like privacy, data security, and are they, are they respecting or, or upholding universal human rights principles in terms of a right to privacy? These are the things we talk about when we talk about um, AI. And then who do we hold responsible when there is an error? Do we do, I mean, it's a machine, you cannot fight a machine. So who are we going to hold responsible in such situations? Next slide, please. Meaning of responsible AI and its use. Responsible AI follows um, a number of principles, fairness, accountability, secure, um, security, and um, ethical principles generally. So the ability of the system to interpret um, data or diagnose a patient, for example, fairly without taking into consideration a racial ba background or ethnic uh, group. Fairness of AI, the ability for AI to make decisions without discriminating a certain group of people. And most often these um, issues arise when um, they are not programmed properly. The data being used um, is not, say, diverse. Safety and security. This is another form, aspect of responsible use of AI. Does it take a, is it, are the data secured? Is it safe? to avoid er errors by machine or irrational decisions. So AI takes into account how responsible AI takes into account ethical principle to ensure that human beings, the people who are using this software or these solutions are fairly represented or very well represented in, in a manner that upholds and respects their, their rights. Thank you very much. Elena will take on our findings in 
on impacts of AI. Excellent. Thank you very much, Anton. Um, so I think it just was a great introduction for us into the topic and just to, for us all to set a little bit of law and, and, you know, be clear of what we mean by AI and what we mean by responsible AI. But um, however, I think it's, you know, important to mention that this topic is still very much researched by, by researchers and by developers. And it's not something, it's a very complex topic and it's not something that we, you know, we will be able to cover fully today or we will have answers to everything within the next uh, next years um, but a part of this you know the realm of artificial intelligence and the realm of uh, of ethics uh, of AI and, and responsible AI our organization wanted to understand better how diversity and inclusion are addressed in frameworks assessment frameworks mainly that are uh, initiated out there in the world by different countries by different organizations by different institutions um, and for this process, uh, we carried out in-house research. We basically collected information on about um, and data on about 128 documents. These are worldwide. So these are tools, these are policies, these are assessments, um, and so on and so forth, to basically respond to a few key research questions. So we wanted to understand how, as I said, diversity and inclusion was addressed in this assessment frameworks. Uh, we wanted to understand the type of assessment we wanted to understand the target group and we also wanted to understand the initiating actor so public sector private sector institution um, etc that was looking into that why well because we want to as we want to empower youth and women in particular to be fully um, you know, to be fully active in the era of artificial intelligence and basically benefit as much as they can from those opportunities. First of all, for us, it was important and crucial to understand how these target groups are addressed in the, in the design, implementation and assessment phases of artificial intelligence. And there are three key, key things we would like or key findings we would like to share with you today. The first one is related to where this the assessment or most of the assessments are coming from so geographically from which part of the world and we see that basically north america is uh, is leading on developing different assessment um, frameworks for artificial intelligence again this can be tools boxes this can be um, strategies, this can be policies, this can be also a framework. Um, after which we have Europe coming as a very strong actor in the, in leading, um, leading this work. And of course, um, we also have international institutions that are basically uh, doing this kind of work as well. Then the second uh, key finding is related to um, to the sectors or the actors that are initiating, that drafted basically these assessments. And as you can see, there are a few groups that, um, that are leading. So one is definitely the private sector. Um, the second one is the public sector, or we would, let's say perhaps they are almost equal, um, equal parts of the cake. <laughs> and um, after that, we have, of course, research institutes, but but also international organizations being very active in, in at least, you know, putting out their guiding principles, um, you know, certain values that should be uh, uh, respected or should be followed or should be questioned when developing uh, artificial intelligence solutions. And the third, um, Key, a key finding we wanted to share with you today um, is the fact that basically assessments, as we were looking at it from a target group, so as we were looking at, uh, at these assessments for to understand how youth and women are represented, uh, we had to basically come to the conclusion that um, youth are very um, are not so much um, directly addressed in those uh, in those tools. Uh, same with children. We do find that citizens I mentioned being quite prominent. Um, it doesn't come at the first place. What comes at the first place is basically the public administration and businesses and scientists or or researchers are being mainly addressed and mainly um, you know targeted and purposed for um, through with this with this assessment. So what basically so 
then this leads us, of course, to the question, um, so what does this research mean and what does responsible AI and ethics AI has to do with this whole thing? Um, I think there are a few things for us to really keep in mind, and I will start with one quote that um, comes from Professor Virginia Digmon, uh, who is a professor at Umea University, and she says, you know, the danger is not AI taking over the world, but misuse and failures, and I think this is really core and, and, and very important to keep in mind. And also was something crucial that we, we basically want to address with AIDA and in our organization. AI is a tool at the end of the day. AI is a technology and really all depends on what we do uh, with it and about it. And designed AI, that is a designed AI for all, there has to be a few components, basically. So one of the components is to have AI for good, so addressing more of our social uh, societal challenges and economic challenges. AI for all, so it has to be inclusive, it has to be diverse, and AI by all, so a collaborative, co-creative co process of development and design is very much needed um, when developing AI solutions and when addressing um, AI. Then we also, of course, notice the lack of governance, bias systems, and you may be very much aware of coded bias, the movie, and many others that have been out there. Um, and also a lack of collaboration because we looked at one of the findings for, for, from this research was that, okay, there are many, um, you know, many assessments, many frameworks, um, maybe some of them would deal with the ethics or responsible AI, but we definitely noticed that there was a lack of collaboration between different sectors, between academia and let's say the private sector. And I think this is something that can be enhanced and should be enhanced uh, worldwide. Um, and perhaps one more thing from my from my side. So there are a few uh, a few countries or many countries already that have tackled this this issue, the AI development issue, let's say. Um, and as you may you may have heard of the researcher team um, team Dutton. So team Dutton started in 2017 a huge database with countries and governments that have initiated um, AI strategies. And I think we stopped counting um, by at the end of 2018, 2019. I think since then there were many more other countries that have joined and uh, M Fon will talk about some of those countries in Africa as well that are uh, initiating their AI strategies. And there are a few other initiatives when it comes to, you know, what is done about responsible AI at, AI at global level. Um, IEEE is one of these uh, global initiatives definitely targeting ethical um, AI that is aligned um, with autonomous, uh, with our values. And that is basically uh, designed for autonomous and intelligent systems. Um, I encourage you all to look up their website if you haven't done so. And the way they do it is basically by defining certain standards that have to be followed and having a very uh, clear system, a design that is, you know, encompasses transparency, privacy, um, and also algorithmic bias. And um, at European level, because we wanted to talk about Europe and Africa in particular, uh, there are a few initiatives already happening at national level, but also European level, uh, coming from the European Union. And today I will focus on the European uh, legal framework for artificial intelligence that basically addresses fundamental rights and safety risks specific to the AI system. So very, um, very recently, um, I think it was in, in April, the European Union has published this framework. This is a work that has taken them more than two years. Uh, different working groups, different um, collaborations between the public, the private sector, and so on and so forth to basically come up with a framework and was one of the first initiatives, I would say, worldwide. Um, and although the framework itself, you know, some may say it's still very general, it's not very clear enough, um, uh, it is, I, I think, it's a, the right step um, towards an AI that is responsible and that that respects certain values, the values that we want the tool and the solution to, to respect. 
there, I'm, I'm sure there are different approaches, different ways to go about developing um, a regulatory framework. In Europe, the experts thought that a, a risk approach would be, um, risk-based approach would be the best way to go about it. And as you can see, there are four different levels of risk. Um, uh, degrees that, that were defined in this framework, so minimal risk, limited risk, high risk, unacceptable risk. So the framework also states on how to basically, sorry, how to um, uh, how to address issues for each of the, for each of the levels and happy to, again, don't forget we have a chat function, so please ask your questions. If you have any questions in the chat, we'll be more than happy to address those and tell you more about this framework. Then another initiative, which I think is definitely worth mentioning also at the EU level is uh, the AI for, uh, for EU has different components. So one component is basically um, cascade funding for different projects that fit within the, the, the umbrella or within the purpose of this, uh, of this initiative, which is a collaborative um, H2020 project, which aims to do two things, mobilize the entire European AI community around uh, opportunities um, coming from AI, but also creating a leading, leading collaborative um, AI European platform to basically nurture economic growth and learn from each other and, um, and, and basically, um, yeah, have some knowledge, uh, knowledge sharing. Um, and this initiative and co-working groups, they came up with a very interesting uh, framework uh, for human-centered artificial intelligence, uh, which, which, which is based on five research areas that you can see on, this, on the slide. So explainable, um, verifiable, collaborative, integrative, and, and physical AI. And uh, again, use the chat function if you have any questions related to this. Uh, the time is too short to go too much into details for each of those. And with this being said, I'm all handing over again to Enfan. Thank you very much, Elena. Um, our time is really short, so I'm going to quickly summarize what Africa is doing on a regional level. African countries, of course, recognize the importance of um, the potential of AI to contribute to a broad range of sustainable development goals, like um, quality education, clean water, sanitation, and uh, reduction in poverty and improve agriculture. So in 2019, there was a special group established by African Union um, that places a particular focus on AI and other emerging technologies. There is also the Digital Transformation Strategy for Africa, which is set to run from 2020 to 2030. The aim of this um, digital transformation is that it would help to understand how AI can be integrated into many sectors to improve the economic situation of the continent. Um, the digital transformation strategy builds on existing um, initiatives and frameworks such as the policy and regulatory initiative for digital Africa. Um, African Union has also established um, a high level panel on emerging technology and with the sole aim of identifying and prioritizing innovation, um, particularly artificial intelligence. And the second aim of this um, high-level panel is to create an enabling environment where policies are created in such a way that ethical um, use of AI is taken into consideration. Um, beyond the African Union, countries in Africa are at different stages of creating their AI strategies. For example, in 2018, Mauritius um, was the first country to launch this, its AI strategy. Um, you have Egypt, um, South Africa, and many countries are working at different stages of developing their AI strategy. What, what we noticed in, our, in the course of our research is that much of the strategies are focused on um, development and um, nothing, not much is focused on children, youth, and um, the particularly young population in Africa. So, and you also have um, the private sector, for example, Google, Google set up its AI lab in 2018 in Ghana, and Kenya has partnered with IBM to drive AI education and research. So in Africa, there is, there's a lot going on, even though it's not properly documented or shown, or, um, African uh, countries are taking are prioritizing um, 
the importance of um, integrating AI in, a, in an ethical manner into the, uh, into, the, into the economy. Next slide, please. And then you go to the challenges. Um, I would mention that beyond the continent, globally, there is a, there is a challenge with when it comes to responding to ethical AI or responsible AI. Um, for example, you would say in Africa, um, uh, access to internet connection is still very low when you compare it to um, other countries or continents. Africa's, um, Africans, about 26% have access to internet connection, which becomes a problem because, because you realize that AI enabled um, applications need internet. And when consumers are unable to access internet, then AI awareness continues to diminish. So that is a main challenge also. And then the problem of um, um, lack of policy, you, you, you ask yourself, um, who are the people developing AI policies? Um, what is their knowledge or education in terms of, um, because AI is a new field, much of the research is still ongoing. So there is a challenge of effectively developing a policy that um, it takes, a, it takes a lot of things into consideration. Um, also, uh, digital literacy and AI awareness. Um, this is a challenge, and all, at the same time, it is being remedied in different countries. Uh, for example, Google setting up an AI lab in Ghana and similar activities in other countries. This, this would definitely improve the, um, the digital gap and provide awareness on how youth can use AI solutions to create um, new ideas and solve problems. Next slide, please. So what should determine an African approach to responsible AI? Um, responsible AI is not a one size fits all approach. What works in Africa may not work in Europe and what works in Europe may not work in Asia. So it is important that um, a human rights, a human centered approach is taken into consideration. Um, perhaps a multi-stakeholder consultation from the private sector to the public sector. And at the center, at the heart of the policy formulation or development of a policy framework, you, you would consider the youth, the youngest, um, Africa is the youngest population in the world with uh, about 60% of its population under 25 years old. So I think it's very important to take into consideration the young people. So, and, and, and also, an inclusive approach that promotes a gender inclusive gender, gender equality and bridges the gap for women and girls to get into the AI um, sector, AI ecosystem, and take part in developing um, AI solutions to, to reduce uh, stereotypes and, and biases. Next slide, please. So the takeaway message in all of this is that AI, responsible AI is a shared responsibility. It's not just the work of the government or the work of the private sector, but it affects every one of us. It's a shared responsibility. And in any way you can, ask questions, read documents, get yourself familiarized with um, strategies, find out how these strategies are impacting our lives and how we can improve on them because it is a shared responsibility. Um, I think we have the floor now for questions. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. And perhaps just one last thing from my side. Don't forget, um, design is never value neutral. So the question is, what kind of values do we want to have? And in particular, as we are moving to, to the question sec section, please uh, share with us what are your views on the responsible AI in Africa? How, what do you think would be a right approach? As we believe that each of us is responsible. We as a citizen, we are responsible to inform ourselves, to you know, find ways to educate ourselves. The governments are responsible for having the right policies, the right frameworks in place, facilitating that dialogue. And then the private sector, of course, has its own responsibility as long as, um, as, as well as, as the academia. So, each of us play a key role. Um, and with this being said, thank you very much for listening to our discussion. And I hope there are many, many questions that you have shared with us on the chat and more than happy to, to discuss those. Thank you very much and follow us, stay in touch, share your views and your thoughts with us. Thank you.